So my paper presentation is on multiparametric prostate MRI as a non-invasive investigation in detection of the lesions of the prostate. Under the guidance of Dr. Yogendra Sachdev, Professor and Head of Department of Radio Diagnosis, Pravara Rural Hospital, Loni. Carcinoma of prostate is one of the common cancer in men. Most of the prostate cancer are slow growing and indolent rather than being aggressive in the initial stage and they seldom produce any symptom until the advanced age. Hence, it is very important to have an early diagnosis of the prostate cancer which can further lead to improved treatment outcomes. Traditional methods used to diagnose the lesion includes the PSA, the digital rectal examination, the uh, truss guided biopsy using a 12 core biopsy. However, all these methods have their own limitation and disadvantages. Now, digital rectal exa examination is also has an high inter-observer variability. Moreover, on a study, it was found that trust guided biopsy is associated with misdiagnosis of clinically significant prostate cancer in up to 30% of the cases. Thus, an improvement in diagnostic pathway for the prostate cancer is needed in order to decrease both misdiagnosis of clinically significant prostate cancer and overdiagnosis of clinically insignificant prostate cancer. The inadequacy of screening tool to distinguish the subclinical illness from clinically significant prostate cancer always acts as a barrier to the early diagnosis of the prostatic lesion. Multiparametric MRI is the imaging modality which provides the best anatomic imaging of the prostate gland due to its superior resolution compared with the other imaging techniques. There is introduction of the high field uh, strength magnet, three Tesla magnet, which have result in higher signal to noise ratio, which can be used to increase the resolution, contrast or speed. Currently, MRI is the most optimal technique for the evaluation of the prostate and it involves a multiparametric approach for the diagnosis of the prostatic lesions. Multiparametric MRI is currently gaining acceptance in detecting, the, detecting and localizing the lesions of the prostate and guiding the targeted biopsy or the focal therapy, stratifying the risk before the treatment, monitoring the patient during the active surveillance planning and choosing surgery or radiation and accessing the recurrence. So uh, with the help of the multiparametric MRI imaging, we basically diagnose the lesions of the prostate in the early stage, which are clinically significant and do a targeted biopsy to prove the lesion and thus we can uh, start the treatment of the patient in the initial stages. So aims and objective of my study is to evaluate the multiparametric MRI as a non-invasive investigation in detection of the lesions of the prostate in patients referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for the evaluation in Pravara Institute of Medical Science. Materials and methodology include the study design, which is a descriptive cross-sectional study, the study population was all the patients referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for the evaluation of the prostate who were enrolled in this study. The assessment of this patient was done using Philips Engineer Elation machine, uh, which is a three Tesla MRI machine. The inclusion criteria include all the patients who are giving consent for the study, all the patients referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis for the Provera Hospital Loni, asymptomatic patient with suspected prostatic lesions and patients with obstructive uropathy, hesitancy, uh, urinary uh, retention, hematuria or pelvic pain. Exclusion criteria include the patient not giving consent for the study and patients with contraindication for MRI such as claustrophobia, metallic implant, aneurysmal clip, pacemakers and prostatic heart valves. The protocol for my study was all the studies were performed on a 3 Tesla Philips MRI machine. The protocol which are used was T1 Excel images, T2 SAS images, coronal and Excel images, T2 fat set Excel images, diffusion values were taken at 0, 800, 1400, 2000 B values, ADC images were taken, dynamic contrast study was done and MR spectroscopy was also performed. The component of the multiparametric MRI includes the T1 weighted imaging, T2 weighted imaging, diffusion weighted imaging multi-magnetic uh, resonance uh, spectroscopy and dynamic contrast images. So results were 
A study was conducted on 18 patients who were referred to the Department of Radio Diagnosis with uh, problems of difficulty in maturation. Out of this 18 patients which were studied, 11 patients proved to have adenocarcinoma, 4 patients had BPH, 1 patient had prostatitis and 2 patients were negative for malignancy. All these patients underwent the multiparametric MRI prostate uh, evaluation and following uh, results were obtained in my study. So, 68% uh, of the patient with a brood pyrite uh, who were given pyrite uh, 4 5 proved to be a case of adenocarcinoma. 29% had uh, BPH, 1% uh, uh, case had prostatitis, and 2% uh, were negative. Age wise distribution of the patient who are enrolled in the study includes in this 50 to 60 age years. I had three patients, 60 to 78 years were examined, 70 to 80 years, four patients were examined, and 80 to 90 years, three patients were examined. In my study, a PSA level of the patients includes uh, PSA less than 10, two patients, PSA 10 to 23 patients, PSA level more than 20 to 100, 10 patients, and PSA level more than 100. Three patients. So out of this patient, the PS, patients with PSA level 100 and 288 had a skeletal metastasis. And this is a chart that demonstrates the risk of prostate cancer associated with PSA levels. So if the PSA level is less than 10, there is low risk. If the PSA level is 10 to 20, there was intermediate risk. PSA level more than 20 was associated with high risk of prostatic malignancy. On the basis of the lesions which are obtained on MRI images, we can classify the patients according to the risk from very low risk to very high risk that a clinically significant cancer is likely to be present. We have got five categories ranging from pyrates 1 to pyrates 5. In pyrates 1, there is very low risk for the cancer to be present. Pyrates 2 has low risk of the clinically significant cancer to be present. Pyrates 3 has an intermediate risk, Pyrates 4 has high risk, and Pyrates 5 has very high risk that a clinically significant cancer is likely to be present. So for the Pyrates categorization, we assign score to the lesions which are obtained on the T2 XL images. These lesions can be obtained in the peripheral zone or the transitional zone. So the scoring system for both of them is different. Now, if we get a uniform hypo, hyper intense signal which is normal in the prostate in the peripheral zone, then a score of 1 is aside. If we get a linear or wedge shaped hypo intense signal, then a score of 2 is assigned for the lesion. If we get a heterogeneous signal which is non circumscribed, rounded, then a score of 3 is assigned for the peripheral zone lesion. Now, if we get a circumscribed homogeneous moderately hypo intense signal with greatest dimension less than 1.5 which is confirmed to the prostate then we assign a score of 4 for the lesion which is present in the peripheral zone of the prostate. Now similarly if the greatest dimension of the lesion in the peripheral zone of the prostate is more than 1.5 or there is evidence of extra prostatic invasion, then a score of 5 is assigned. Similarly, we have the scoring system for the transitional zone of the prostate. If the score 1 is for the normal appearing uh, nodule of the prostate. If a nodule is present in the transitional zone, which is mostly encapsulated nodule and provides a high point in signal, then a score of 2 is assigned for that lesion in the transitional zone of the prostate. If the uh, lesion has heterogeneous signal with presence of obscured margins in the transitional zone of prostate, then the score of 3 was assigned. If the lesion is lenticular shaped and the greatest dimension is less than 1.5, then a score of 4 was assigned. Similarly, if the lesion had a uh, dimension more than 1.5 cm, then a score of 5 was assigned. 
for the peripheral of the transition zone of the prostate we also categorize the lesion on the basis of the score which are assigned on the diffusion weighted imaging so if there is no abnormality then a score of 1 is assigned if there is a linear hyper intense area of diffusion restriction obtained on high b value then we assign a score of 2 if there is focal area of diffusion restriction on high dw high d uh, b values on on d diffusion weighted imaging then a score of 3 is assigned if there is focal markedly hyper intense area of diffusion restriction with greatest dimension less than 1.5 cm then a score of 4 is assigned for such lesion now in you know if we have the uh, focal and discrete area of diffusion restriction with greatest dimension more than 1.5 cm or an evidence of extra prostatic invasion then a score of 5 is assigned for such lesion now after uh, categorizing the lesion or the peripheral zone and the transitional zone of the prostate we can compile our data and assign the pyrus category now in category 3 so for example if we get a category 3 then if the dynamic contrast enhancement is positive then the lesion gets further classified into pyrus 4 category now if we assign the score and we get dynamic contrast negative then such lesion is categorized into pyrus 3 category of intermediate risk of the prostate cancer in my study pyrid score 1 and 2 are considered negative whereas the pyrid score which were assigned as 3 4 and 5 were considered as intermediate risk high risk and very high suspicious for malignancy so out of the 18 patients studied 11 patient with pyrid score of 4 and 5 had evidence of malignancy on hpr correlation and 7 out of 8 patient with a score of 2 and 3 had evidence of bph and prostatitis on the hpr report This is a T2 weighted axial image of the patient in which there is presence of a T2 hypo intense signal which shows corresponding areas of diffusion restriction on DWI images. The T2 hypo intense area showed areas of diffusion restriction on DWI images with low ADC value and shows a positive uptake of contrast on dynamic contrast uh, imaging. so this lesion was categorized as pyrid spike uh, lesion and on the histopathological examination it proved to be a case of adenocarcinoma the ps level of this patient was more than 100 and patient had also the skeletal mets in the body the patient had enlargement of the prostate with symptoms of obstructive uropathy and t2 subtal images also shows the presence of mucosal irregularities involving the urinary bladder This is the ultrasound correlation of the same patient. The patient had PSH level more than 100 and had skeletal and hepatic and brain parenchymal metastasis. So this is a CT section and corresponding ultrasound uh, section of the patient with hepatic uh, metastasis. On T2 weighted sagittal images of the spine, there are multiple hypo intense areas which are obtained. Also CT section was taken. and the patient had extensive skeletal metastasis in the whole of the vertebral column also the patient had metastasis in the femoral region the sensitivity of my study was 91.67% specificity of the study was 87.5% positive predictive value was 91.98% and negative predictive value was 87.4% So for the conclusion multiparametric mri is a non invasive and useful imaging modality that is emerging as an accurate tool for identifying the clinically relevant tumors the protocol including t2 weighted imaging dynamic uh, contrast enhanced mri diffusion weighted imaging and mr spectroscopy can provide clinically useful information to the urologist for confronting the problem of managing the patient with prostate cancer it can help in identifying diagnosing and staging staging of the prostate cancer and can differentiate clinically significant tumors from benign lesions by combining the anatomical and functional imaging techniques thereby enabling the optimal risk stratification and treatment planning
so these are my references for the study